Mind blowing punishments Genghis Khan did to his enemies. History is filled with men that committed heinous crimes against humanity. From the ruthless Adolf Hitler to the very cruel Stalin, these men are remembered for uprooting a whole civilization and planting fear in the hearts of their enemies. Well, however bad you may think Stalin and Hitler were, they do not compare to the cruel Genghis Khan. This Mongolian king is remembered and feared for what he did to his enemies. And you are about to find out exactly what he did. Join us in today's video as we explore the ruthless punishments Genghis Khan administered to his enemies. Watch this video to the end as you will be fascinated at the cruelty and creativity of these punishments. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel for more amazing content. Now, let's dive in. Number 10. Execution Beginning our list is the gruesome but final punishment, execution. While this is one of the more common punishments employed by the Mongol Empire, it follows after a whole lot of cruelty has been meted out on the victim. Well, unlike the popularly used execution system which is hanging, the Mongols go for plain but very bloody decapitation. The condemned individual would be brought before a crowd, where an executioner wielding a very sharp sword or a glistening axe would swiftly and mercilessly sever their head from their body in a single stroke. Remember how Lord Stark's head was chopped off? Exactly. The brutal act is done with the intention of causing instant death. However, this is not the case sometimes as the executioner would have to strike the victim's head multiple times to prolong their suffering. The amputated head would often be displayed as a warming sign to others and to strike fear in the hearts of intending enemies. The Mongols were ruthless and they did not hide their ruthlessness. Number 9. Decimation If you think execution is cruel, then think again. The Mongols had creative and very cruel ways of instilling discipline and loyalty in their soldiers and fear in the hearts of their enemies. One such way is the punishment known as decimation. With the meaning of the name, I'm sure you may have an idea how cruel it is. Well, doubtly that idea. The punishment involves dividing the offending group into smaller units usually consisting of 10 soldiers each. After they are divided, the soldiers would be made to draw lots, with one in every 10 soldier being marked as the condemned. This is not the cruel part. The cruel part is that the chosen soldier, who is not dubbed the condemned, would be executed by his comrades, some of whom may be his close allies and friends. The condemned soldier is not executed randomly, no. There are often prescribed methods for the execution, some of which are hanging, stabbing, on rare occasion, beheading. Decimation was meant to make the soldier disciplined and reinforce the importance of bravery and loyalty within the Mongol ranks. Loyalty is the foundation of every army's strength. And when that rank is desecrated by infields, soon enough enemy troops will infiltrate and take the army down. Hence, why Genghis Khan impressed the importance of loyalty in his troops, even if the means were cruel. Number 8. Annihilation While decimation was to instill discipline in his army, Genghis Khan did not tolerate any form of protest or resistance from neighboring cities that posed a threat to his reign. Annihilation, as the name implies, is the order given to Mongolian tribes to bring down a rebellion city to the rubble. Genghis Khan ordered a complete annihilation of these cities, both buildings and population. More like wiping their existence off the map. This punishment involves the systematic killing of every single inhabitant, sparing no one, regardless of age or gender. 
the Mongol soldiers would descend on the condemned city with full force, leaving a trail of devastation in their wake. The people of this condemned city would be subjected to very cruel forms of execution like impalement, dismemberment, flaying, and death by fire, amongst others. The punishment served as a chilling reminder of the consequences of defying the Mongol Empire. And, of course, cities harboring plans to war against the Mongol Empire immediately trash their plans after this annihilation is done to another city. Number 7. Psychological Warfare If this was not cruel punishment, one may be pushed to call it brilliant. The Mongols were masters of psychological warfare. They used terror as a potent weapon to intimidate their enemies and keep them in check. The Mongols employed gruesome methods to strike fear into the hearts of their enemies and to secure their place as a superior city. For instance, after conquering a city or defeating an opposing force, the Mongols would impale severed heads and limbs on stakes, prominently displaying them as a horrifying spectacle. This grotesque sight would serve as a warning to other potential adversaries, instilling terror and deterring any thoughts of resistance. The psychological weapon proved to be more potent as keeping enemies in check. Why? Because what the mind cannot conceive out of fear, the body cannot execute. Number 6. Pillaging and looting. This is a very common punishment. It often comes before annihilation and is not as brutal as other punishments on the list. The Mongols were notorious for their pillaging and looting practices. After capturing a city or region, they would unleash their army to plunder the wealth and the valuables of that city. The Mongol warriors would ransack homes, temples, and palaces, seizing items of value, precious stones, and other useful resources. They would spare no expense, taking gold, silver, jewels, artwork, and any other coveted possessions. In their wake, they left a path of destruction, burning and demolishing buildings, crops, and infrastructure. Number 5. Mass Enslavement There's really no end to the terror of Genghis Khan, and this next punishment only betheruses its extent. The Mongols frequently enslaved large numbers of people from the territories they conquered. This if they do not annihilate the city. Captives, whether soldiers or civilians, would be forcibly enslaved and subjected to harsh conditions. Many were taken as laborers, forced to toil in fields, mines and construction projects. Other, particularly young women, were often taken as concubines or servants for the Mongol elite. The enslaved individuals would endure grueling hardship, including physical abuse, long hours of labor, and a complete loss of freedom. You really don't want to get on the bad books of the Mongol Empire. Number 4. Cultural Suppression The punishment is just as cruel as it is weird. In addition to physical punishments, Genghis Khan and the Mongols implemented policies to suppress and control the cultures of conquered peoples. Since culture is a people's identity, what better way to torment them than taking away their identity? Temples and sacred sites of local religions would be destroyed, often with great symbolism and fanfare, aiming to undermine the spiritual beliefs and practices of the conquered population. The Mongols would impose their own customs and traditions, prohibiting and discouraging the practices of local rituals, languages and traditions. This cultural suppression served to assimilate the conquered peoples into the Mongol Empire and solidify Mongol dominance. Number 3. Flaying We are down to the top 3. Fasten your seatbelt because it is about to get gory here. At the number 3 is Genghis' most loved punishment, flaying. Arguably one of the cruelest ways to die, 
This sadistic punishment employed by the Mongols shows how ruthless they are. The condemned person would have their skin meticulously peeled off, strip by strip, while they were still alive. The excruciating pain and the slow, agonizing process would make this punishment particularly terrifying and torturous. Flaying was intended to serve as a severe deterrent, as the sight of such brutality would strike fear into the hearts of those who witnessed or heard about it. The punishment was employed at rare occasions, but it leaves a lasting effect present at the gory event. Number 2. Death by a thousand cuts. Spot number 2 is the very macabre punishment that is only used on rare occasions. Death by a thousand cuts. Also known as Lingxi or death by a thousand slashes, this form of punishment aimed to prolong the suffering of the condemned. The person would be tied to a post or suspended in the air, while the executioner would methodically and deliberately inflict numerous small, shallow cuts all over the body. The cuts would be made with precision, ensuring that the wounds were not immediately fatal. The intention was to maximize the pain and draw out the process of dying, resulting in a slow, agonizing death. Number 1. Human Shield At the top of our list is the most gruesome punishment employed by Genghis Khan that involves using the condemned individuals as shields. In situations where Genghis Khan and his forces faced fortified cities or strong defenses, they would employ this particularly cruel tact. The Mongols would capture a group of civilians or prisoners, often women, children or the elderly, and force them to march at the forefront of their army or approach the city walls. This would create a dilemma for the defenders, as attacking or defending against the Mongols risks causing harm to the innocent individuals used as shields. It was a ruthless strategy that exploited the defenders' reluctance to harm civilians and created a strategy advantage for the Mongols. That's all we can take on today's video. Do let us know what you think about those mind-blowing punishments in the comment section below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more amazing content. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.